Let's draw the Lewis structure of formic acid. But you have to kind of know what formic acid is before you even begin this. The official name for formic acid is methanoic acid, which means it's a carboxylic acid that only has a single carbon to the chain. That's going to be COOH. That's the carboxylic acid part. And then there's no other carbons because it's a one carbon chain. So it's just a single H at the end of the chain there. Okay, again, you have to kind of know that carboxylic acids are structured this way before you even begin this question. Now, the way that I uh, draw my Lewis structure for molecular compounds, and this is a molecular compound because there's no metals in it, it's all non-metals, is to count the total number of valence electrons that I'm going to be dealing with. Well, hydrogen in group one brings one valence electron with it. Carbon in group 14 brings four valence electrons with it. I'm going to try to write these down before I forget. Oxygen is in group 16, which means it brings six valence electrons with it. And there's another one of those. And there's another hydrogen as well. When I add all of those together, 5, 11, 15, uh, 17, 18, that's 18 electrons total. That's how many I'm going to be allowed to put into my structure by the time I'm done. Then I'm going to draw the central atom and the surrounding atoms all single bonded to start with. Now again, if you're not familiar with the structure of an acid, this is going to be kind of difficult to just figure out on your own. An acid has a carbon that's bonded to two separate oxygens, and one of those oxygens has an extra H on it. That's the H that makes this an acid. It can come off due to like resonance, etc., etc. Then the carbon is bonded to another chain as a third thing. Here it's just the hydrogen, but for longer acids, it's usually another carbon atom. Now I'm going to single bond all those together. Two, four, six, eight. I've already dealt with eight electrons of the 18 by putting that down. Now I'm going to add lone pairs to complete the octets of my outer atoms until they are full. Now, I can't go past 18 electrons, so let's just keep that in mind. And hydrogen doesn't obey the octet rule. It's happy with a, a single bond and it's done. But the oxygens do obey the octet rule, so I gotta complete those octets. I've already, I already have two bonds to this oxygen here, so that's already four electrons. And I had put down two, four, six, eight. So I got nine, 10, 11, 12. Now this oxygen has one bond, so that's already two. Um, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, I gotta stop because I'm only allowed to put 18 electrons total, but also now that oxygen is happy with its two, four, six, eight electrons. It satisfies its octet rule. I like it, I like it. Now, if you have extra electrons, which we don't, we used up all 18 already, I would dump those onto the central atom, but I don't have any, so I can't do that. Now, if there's an incomplete octet on the central atom, we're going to move lone pairs from the outer atoms into double and triple bonds and stuff until it is happy. That central atom carbon is surrounded by two, four, six electrons so far. It needs to satisfy the octet rule to have eight electrons around it. So from either of these oxygens, I have to move the lone pair into the bond. Now I'm going to choose this oxygen here because it has what we call a negative formal charge. A formal charge is not an official thing. It's just a way you can do some accounting to figure out which of the atoms is more likely to have donated the electrons. The formal charge on this oxygen here, or any atom, is calculated by taking the number of valence electrons that atom brought with you, minus the number of dots minus the number of lines around it. So six minus six is zero, minus one is negative one. The more negative the formal charge, the more likely it is to donate these electrons to the cause of completing the octet of an adjacent atom. In this case, I'm gonna move this lone pair 
it didn't, doesn't actually matter which lone pair you pick, into the bond so that those electrons are now still belonging to the oxygen, but also they're now being shared with the carbon. Now carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. That's a complete octet, and that's what I'm talking about. The oxygen still has two, four, six, eight electrons around it, so it's happy as well. This here is your complete Lewis structure. I mean, you can ignore those. You would have erased them if you weren't drawing it in bright colored markers like me. This is your complete Lewis structure for formic acid. Thanks for sticking with me through that. A little complicated simply because it's questionable how, uh, how the whole thing is structured, etc. But uh, you stuck with it and I'm proud of you. Thanks for being with me and best of luck.